Hi there, welcome back to ADSR Massive Tutorials. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, get yourself subscribed. YouTube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. In this tutorial, we're going to continue looking at setting up MIDI controllers with Massive and using automation with Massive um, inside Logic. Here is my door. So we've got this kind of bass sound. Auto bass. I actually included a link to download this patch so there's a link on the screen and you can just download this patch directly from the MassiveSynth.com website so we're not going to recreate this patch but it's just so you've got that patch if you want to follow along with this tutorial So, and the reason I chose this patch for this tutorial is because we've got a nice DAF filter inserted in there and that's just going to control the sound nicely and and what I've done so far with this bass as I played for you at the start of the tutorial was um, I've set up some automation here with the filter cut off the, 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 the filter cut off on filter 1 where the sound is being rooted at the moment we're hearing just filter 1 and and I've kind of programmed in this automation and uh, I've used Logic's uh, snap automation which is a really nice feature which means the automation points if we look here will snap to the beat so that's quite nice for this kind of uh, automation really and the reason I've set it up in this way is if you an FM8 user you'll be f familiar with the multi-stage envelopes and we can just kind of control click and we can have as many sort of pointers we can just customize our own envelopes you can't do that with massive but you can do a similar thing using automation so yeah you've got the performer in Massive and you could set up a performer and use this to control the filter cut off but you wouldn't get this this fine control that we have here to create this complex sequence I mean the the MIDI for this riff is just a get it up here it's just a C note it's just a C3 sustain and that's it and we've got a little bit of pitch bend in there that little fill and uh, just got busy with just just programming some some kind of filters sort of filter cut off automation so it's acting a bit like an LFO controlling the cut off but what we've got the advantage of doing it in this way is we've got that precise control like which is great so it's one way of uh, kind of using automation with massive really to just get some really precise sort of movement going on I'm actually going to take this one step further and have a look at this uh, synth here and just loop it over a bit so increasing the resonance is pretty cool and here this modulation oscillator that would be pretty cool for a fill and we've also got in filter 2 we've got a bandpass filter set up so we move this mix slider to, to filter 2 now with quite a high resonance value on that bandpass filter moving this cut off frequency around sounds pretty cool so I'm going to set up some uh, MIDI controllers here with Massive and in the previous tutorial we showed you how to do it inside Logic in the first tutorial in this series I showed you how to do it with Massive in standalone mode there's a couple of um, comments come back, a bit of feedback and someone was experiencing similar issues setting up using MIDI learning Massive inside FL Studio so um, I think the way to go is if you're using Ableton or Cubase FL Studio or Logic is to use the Logic preferences or Cubase preferences to set up rather than using massive MIDI learn use in Logic where you can use something called automation quick access where I can assign controllers and so you need to assign your MIDI controller using your door it seems to work a bit more seems to be a bit more responsive using it in this way so automation quick access in logic we can access this in the mix drop down menu and uh, what I want to do it's on at the moment I want to edit it and it remembers previous assignments that we have set up in previous projects you know like so then the last time I set up some automation quick access it's remembered these kind of learned sort of parameters so I want to highlight these and delete them and uh, set up some new ones so Let's go back to on and assign and edit and can move that out of the way. What we're going to do is get massive up here 
and I've got a Machine Mark II controller so I've got the eight rotary knobs that I can use or assign as MIDI controllers here so with Automation Quick Access on it's ready, it's waiting, it's waiting to receive a MIDI message so what I'm going to do is I want to set up some MIDI controllers to control the resonance the phase of this modulation oscillator and filter to the band, band pass filter, the cutoff frequency so set up our first controller, click on the resonance control move our controller there and that's assigned that parameter there and um, click on this phase of modulation oscillator and then move our second rotary knob on the Machine Mark II controller or if you're not using whatever MIDI controller you're using go on to the second kind of controller and assign that there to the phase of the modulation oscillator and then the third controller I'm going to assign is a cutoff frequency of filter 2 so click on the cutoff frequency and then move your controller so I've set up my three controllers there if I close massive down you can see it's learned all of them here filter 2 cut off the modulation oscillator and the resonance and uh, I want to go back to this automation quick access hit done close these up and now let's just play the sequence back Got the resonance there, the phase, and if I move this mix slider down, I've got the frequency, the cutoff frequency, my bandpass filter. So let's go back to Logic here and set this channel into latch mode. So it's just going to read. Basically, it's like recording automation with it in latch mode. So with it in latch mode, first thing I'm going to do, move the resonance down to zero going to record in some uh, automation on the uh, resonance here so with it in latch mode let's just play it back a bit of a resonance sort of sweep so that sounded pretty cool and uh, I've just it's recorded in that resonance sweep there so let's give that another spin okay so that's sounding pretty nice and what I want to do as well the modulation oscillator at the end of this 8 bar section I want to bring in that, mod that phase modulation it just kind of really distorts the sound gives it a really nice tone and we can use that as a fill so with the track still in latch mode let's record in that, that, that phase modulation there that's our second controller that we set up And there we go, there is our, our phase modulation automation there. So that's sounding pretty cool. So what we could do is duplicate this sequence over, copy the automation, and on this second section, this can be like a, a transitional kind of or alternative kind of section really. Move the mix slider down, so we've got the second filter controlling things now. So. It's actually recorded that automation in, hasn't it? Because we still had it in latch mode. Yeah, there we go. So just undo that. So filter two. We can now record some automation in here. And this could just be like a little eight bar fill section. So I'm just gonna hit play and I'm just gonna play around with this cutoff frequency of the bandpass filter. So Okay, so it's recorded all of that in. I mean, you can go in here and you could tweak this if you wanted. I quite like recording automation in live. It just gives it a really nice sort of organic vibe. So that's not quite right there. Remember, once you finish recording your automations, especially in Logic, you need to put it back to read mode because if it's still in latch mode and you start moving controllers around and stuff like that, it's going to read that as automation. You're effectively recording more automation in. So. Okay, so that's our little sequence set up there.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Just getting up all the automation lanes here so you can see what's what we've kind of done there. So yeah, I hope you found that tutorial useful. Any questions, please get in touch and make sure you come and check us out in the next video. We're going to be delving into more sort of setting up MIDI controllers and using automation in Massive and stuff. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Cheers.